Well, hello, friends, and welcome to this latest edition of the 360 Experience podcast. I am Tim Brahim, and I'm super excited to share this time with a good friend of mine, Mark Robertson. I think you're going to very much enjoy this dialogue with Mark. He's a man who speaks from his heart, shows an incredible amount of compassion and vulnerability, but on top of all of that, he's an outstanding loan originator, a very bright man that has a lot of wonderful strategies for today's marketplace and really utilizes who he truly is to leverage his gifts and to cultivate business. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about Mark before we get started. He is uh, a division president and uh, a co-creator of Neo Home Loans. So people like Ryan Grant and Josh Metal and Danny Harani and Chris Ledley, et cetera, are all partners of his. Um, he's a part of the Leadership 360 family. Um, he was a part of Leadership 360 Group 7, which was five years ago, so I've known him for that long. Um, and he is also a co-founder and coach for Tribe Coaching uh, and uh, just a wonderful guy. I, I really think that you're going to really, really love this conversation with Mark. We're going to talk about some of the things that he's doing right now to reconnect with real estate agents, go back into his past client database and connect with them. I think you're going to hear some really terrific scripting in this conversation. Mark's a very articulate guy. Um, before we get to the conversation with my friend Mark, uh, what I want to do is just say thank you for watching the show and encourage you to subscribe on whatever podcast channel it is that you're listening to this on, whether it be Spotify, YouTube, or Apple. Uh, and if you, if you like the show, we're always grateful if you give us your likes and make comments on YouTube um, and make sure that you're, uh, you're forwarding it to anybody who you think would find value from listening to the show. As always, check the show notes uh, in this podcast down below uh, as we provide links to other resources. And without further ado, uh, I want to introduce you to Mark Robertson. What's up, Marky Mark? Hey, Tim. How Hello. are you, dude? Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you, too, and a pre-happy Father's Day. We're recording this. It'll air at the end of the summer, but we're recording it right now at the beginning of the summer. And uh, uh. love your smile, man. Like right out of the gate. Thanks for bringing the smile to the show. I appreciate Thank you, man. it. Yeah. And happy Father's Day to you too. Thank you. And welcome back. I, I, uh, you got that little pilot headset on it. Where are we flying to today? You look like you're <laughs> like a Southwest Airlines pilot. <laughs> I, your audio is so good. And I listen to so many people's podcasts and like their audio is so good. I just, I, I'm doing it out of insecurity. If you must know. <laughs> <laughs> no, that no, sounds good. Your audio sounds good. So you're passing good. the test. So, hey, listen, I want to dive right in and then we'll give backfiller stories. And I'm sure this thing will go where it needs to go because we're old sure. buddies at this point. But um, you, so a little background for the for the listener. I mean, you have, was you were an originator and then you've really transcended your your talents into being a leader and being a coach and, and, and a lot of other great things. And then the market turned and one of the things that I know about you is that you really love to lead by being in the trenches. So you have credibility and, and you've dove back into being an originator here over the last three or four months. And I know that wasn't easy for you because I mean, anybody that kind of thought, well, that, that part of my career is now behind me and now you're diving back in. I mean, I, that might be a little bit challenging, but I want to know what, what are you learning right now about yourself as an originator? And what are some of the things that you're doing right now to lead by example uh, in this market that we're in, in the, the summer of 2023? Yeah. Um, you know, the first thing that comes up for me when I hear that is empathy, right? I think there's so many times from the coaching chair or um, a, a leadership chair that I can say things to people when they come. But when I'm getting on the phone and, and I'm calling new real estate agents that I haven't called before, um, that you know I'm not they're not super cold for me, um, or I'm I'm quoting a rate that I'm insecure about to a client. Um, I you really know how hard it is, um, and I think if you're continuing to do that every single day and and you're getting those victories, there's just um, there's just this sense of realness that comes, and, and it's it's it, you know it just is really real. You like, man, you feel their pain because you're literally going through it too. And I think it just gives me a lot of, um, 
ammunition and fuel because I, I then can take those struggles and you know what keeps me up at night is man how can i add value like you know to my agent partners to my loan officers to my friends to my colleagues to um you know to our community at at large right and i want to i want to be creative i i want to help provide solutions i think my desire is to really impact people's lives in, in a positive way right and so i think by getting back in the chair and, and doing the things that need to be done on a, on a weekly basis. Um, you know, that's what comes up for me is it's not that I didn't know the pain was there before Tim, but it's a lot more real when you're also going through the exact same thing. You know, I think, um, it just, it just gives me a perspective that for whatever reason, it's just not the same if I'm not actually doing it. I hope that makes sense. It does. It does. Um, well, and then that's the thing about you that I know that, you know, the listener may not know, but what we're, I'm having a conversation right now with truly one of the great empaths that I've ever known. I mean, you feel big, bro. Like that's one of the most beautiful things about you is, um, I mean, you got a lot of beautiful qualities about you, everything from being an amazing, uh, teacher and an amazing entertainer, um, on our retreats. I mean, you know, just the, the nights at the fire pits with you playing the guitar and, uh, but, but, but that feeling part of you, I, I would imagine has a lot to do with your leadership skills. And before we get there, cause I do want to go into, you know, your leadership philosophies um, and, and maybe how you infuse empathy and compassion to that equation to be a great leader. Um, I'd, I'd love to have a couple of tactical suggestions right out of the gate as to what you're doing right now to create business. Uh, as an example, when we were in Austin, we were talking um, in that breakout about the, the gratitude calls, right? Like, so I'd love for you to unpack that because I thought that was one of the great ideas that came out of that retreat. Yeah, man. Um, that is for me, you know, what you've taught me is that gratitude's not just about the receiver, right? It's also about the giver. Um, and I think right now, a lot of us are struggling with mindset. We're struggling with confidence. And I was just one of those people who I was trying to make the transition from, you know, being the originator to being the leader. And I think a lot of people, you know, were doing that and, and are doing that. And I feel like I was pretty successful at that. But because of that, I had kind of gotten out of um, the the fundamental things that I had been doing, like calling my past client database. It just wasn't possible for a lot of us to stay in touch the way that we were. And I heard this script that a lot of people were using calling, you know, the I'm sorry script, Tim, I'm sorry, I haven't reached out. Um, but and and I'm going to take better care of you. You know, that that was the gist of the script. And it just did not resonate for me. Because uh, while I wish I could have reached out to my, my clients, um, I created this gratitude script and it felt like I was in integrity when I was, when I was saying this script. And so I think anytime you're reaching out for me, integrity is key because it gives me more confidence and um, it just comes across a lot better. And so instead of using that script to reach out to my clients, I went back all the way to like 2007, 2006, I still had some phone numbers and it was amazing when I look back that far, a lot of people still had home phones, but the script was Tim. Hey, it's Mark Robertson. And you may not remember, man, but I did a loan for you in Thousand Oaks back in 2007. I was working at a company called XYZ. And this mortgage market has been um, really challenging. And, and I don't even know if you're aware, but it's humbled me. It's it's made me super humble. And it shouldn't have taken a market that's been difficult to, you know, uh, to make me grateful, but it has. And I'm just one of those people that wants you to know that that transaction came early on in my career and it's meaningful to me. I remember uh, exactly the the process that we went through and how kind you were to me and how much I enjoyed working with your family. And so my call is just simply to say, thank you, man. Um, I hope that, that the house has treated you well. And, and you know, I, I just wanted to say thanks. All right. So teaching moment here, like right out of the gate and thank you. So I, I was charting what I was feeling when you were saying that. So the first thing is the authenticity and the vulnerability behind the script is so beautiful. And 
my guard went down like eight octaves, you know, like I felt in my heart, like I felt good when you express the gratitude and there's a lot of brain science behind that, right? Like that when, when you give gratitude, it evokes dopamine and oxytocin in both the giver and the receiver. So now here I am sitting there listening to you share this beautiful script that is from your heart. And, it, and it's so important that it comes. And, and what, what you said that is critical is that the script needs to resonate for you. It, it can't be somebody else's script. And, and that's what I love the most about what you said is that you're talking about something that you needed to feel in your heart. So then it would come from that place. And in delivering it from that place, I'm able to feel you. And as a result, the end game of that is I'm like, what a nice guy. And I want to help this guy. The natural affect of somebody giving something to you is that you want to reciprocate. I mean, that's Cialdini's law of reciprocity 101 that we both know about. And even if, and, and, and it's so awesome that, that, you know, that call normally is asking for something. And you made that call nothing about that and only about giving. And if you make a bunch of those calls, you're going to create a bunch of people out there who are going to be thinking about how they can help you in return because you just helped them by brightening their day a little bit and sharing something from your heart. Awesome, dude. I mean, if, if, if nobody does anything from this call and gets any wisdom from Mark's coaching, there it is right there. Um, anything else? I know that you've been doing this with realtors as well. Is that correct? Yeah, I uh, I, I called all of the listing and, and buy agents, um, you know, from a couple of years ago and said the same thing. Um, and it is like a miracle call. Like, I, I, I agree with you. If you don't do anything else, you know, just just do this. Um, it 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 was great. This the script is the same. Hey, Tim. You know, we closed on 123 Main Street last year. I was the lender on that transaction and you were the listing agent. And my team and I just really enjoyed working with you. It's been a challenging market. Certainly a lot has changed um, since since we were going through that transaction together. And I just wanted to say thank you. You know, uh, it, I don't take these things for granted. And I know that, um, you know, it, it's it's not a given. And so I, I just wanted to say thanks. Uh, I appreciate it. It was great working with you. And you know, some people would, would say thank you, but what I would get is like the most common answer was, oh my gosh, you're doing it. You are doing it right. Like this is, this mm. is amazing. And you know, I have 10 lenders a day call me and ask me to go coffee to coffee. Like, and one woman is like, Hey, you're my guy. And she's a legend. I mean, she, we knew each other. She's been around for a long time. She's sunsetting, but she's a legend. And she was like, you are my number one lender because you made this call. So I think people just need to your point, they need realness. They they need you to to really hear authenticity on the phone. I think they can they can they can really feel it to your point and I think it's it is the difference maker and those calls were just really powerful and they were more helpful for me and my energy and my mindset than they were for any of the receivers on the on the other end. You can't make five of those calls and truly feel into how lucky you are to have, to be in this career and and to make the type of money that we do and to have the impact that we're able to have and not feel like man, okay, like this is what it's about, right? Cuz I think especially recently it's it's kind of easy to to lose focus on what it's really about. Yeah, you know, there's there's some a few things coming forward for me right now that I want to dive even deeper into on this. So it strikes me that there's everybody's winning in this formula. I mean, you're calling this realtor up and you're catching them totally off guard. You you're not selling anything. You're just offering your heart from from a truly genuine place of gratitude. And I'm not surprised to hear that some of them are almost speechless because they like they don't have their counter script for this man i mean they've got all their counter scripts built around hey do you want to go have coffee with me or i want to know if there's any deals that you want me to pre-qualify or whatever this isn't one they ever get so you just completely disarm them and again if if you make them feel something just feel like appreciated the natural tendencies they're going to want more of that and, and you become a magnet that that draws people you know, to you. Um, what, what I'm aware of, bro, is that 
for for you and I, I, I mean, we're a lot alike. I mean, in, in, in many ways. I mean, we we have we have high degree of sensitivity. Uh, we strive to to do our best to not be in our ego. You and I had that voice text exchange a couple of weeks ago about that. Um, but there are people that I don't know that they have the access to their to their feelings as significantly as say you and I do. And when you know you've heard me say a million times, you know the truth is easiest script. There's nothing to memorize. And and so that's why like whenever any of you give me a scenario, it's pretty easy for me to come up with a script for it because all I do is I just kind of go inward and say, well, what do I feel? I mean, it's on autopilot. It's not, and I'm sure you do the same thing. I'm sure you didn't have to practice the script. I mean, you just kind of go to that place inside of you that can feel, and then you just speak from that place. And that's where the magic happens. Have you, have you encountered people who are struggling to embody this approach that maybe isn't as easy as it is for you to just access that feeling and speak from your heart? For sure. Uh, and, and a lot of people who are scared to do it, you know, it, even if they do have access, it just, you know, and I, I think that borders between that integrity thing, like, hey, man, I just don't feel it, live it, believe it. And it, and it's fear of of putting themselves out there. You know, the story that I tell myself, Tim, is that, you know, I until I met you and and a lot of the mentors in my life, my vulnerability and my access to my feelings was a huge weakness. Like I, I grew up in the Midwest where, you know, <laughs> we settled balls and strikes with with fist fights and there weren't parents around. And, you know, it it, it I was a feeler even even when I was young. Like there's just <laughs> I don't have the ability to be anything else. And so I always, you know, heard things like cry baby and, you know, any any term like that it you know i heard that and so i think i just internalized it and and felt like it was a weakness and did a lot of things to push that vulnerability down <clears throat> and i don't know if it's just my age uh or the times that we're living in but it seems like now there's books being written on it um you know and and there's leadership styles that where it's being appreciated a lot more and so i've just now in the last five years of my life, I'd say, and I think uh, you had a lot to do with helping me discover that that's, that's really a strength. And so I do my best to like slowly bring people around who are in that, in that case. And just, you know, just say like, okay, like what, what does fit for you, Tim? Like, how can we say thank you in a way that you feel like is, is palatable for you? Like, what, tell, tell me what you would say. And, and, you know, they'll fire it back at me and I'll help them polish it up a little bit and, and then off they go. And what I've seen is probably the same thing you've seen as I'm sitting here talking to you. I'm like, oh, Tim's seen this like on steroids, but you start to see people make these, <clears throat> these leaps, these small little jumps. And if you look at like, man, where were they where, when we first started working together and where are they now? And it's like, unbelievable like the, the progress, um, that a lot of people make and how they are able to articulate what they truly feel, um, inside. And, um, it's, that's really rewarding for me when I sit here and think about it, it's like, you know, I'm really proud of those people, of course. And so I'm sure that, you know, I'm putting up a mirror for you because I know you've done that in my life and, and, and so many others, but it's so fulfilling. It's really fulfilling. I loved your answer. Um, I think, what I'm hearing, it, starting with the belief that your vulnerability was a weakness and five years or so ago, you know, having some awareness that it's actually a superpower, because it is. I mean, I've seen it way too many times in you, man, to know what a superpower it really is. Um, but there's that story, right? Like we're all operating from a narrative that says, you know, that either we can't do it or it's wrong to do it or it's frightening or what if I'm not accepted? Because it does take bravery, right? Like if you come from, and, and it's, I really want to applaud you because coming from a place of having been called a crybaby and then leaning into saying, no, I'm not going to believe that story anymore. I'm going to be authentically me and leverage that gift that I have is isn't a true act of bravery um and now you're using it as a catalyst for the connection with 
your past client database and with real estate agents, and you're using that to, to generate new relationships. Um, let's quantify that for a minute, and then I want to go to the place of where you use that same degree of vulnerability as a leader, because I think that there's a lot to learn in this area too, especially with the difficult transitions that you've been through in the last couple of years within your business as a leader. But before we go there, the results, are there any tangible results uh, other than the, 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 uh, the superstar real estate agent that says you're now my lender? Are there, are there other stories you could tell about the success that has come from making these phone calls? I mean, I consider all of them a success. Um, you know, I, it definitely provided immediate leads into our database. Um, I, I don't know exactly what those results are. I knew them at the time that I, um, that I was, was talking, you know, to, to our group, but I don't recall what they are now, but there wasn't one call. I mean, the worst thing I got, the very worst call was, Hey, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'm, I've got to go right now, <laughs> you know, and, and that was it. Um, so I, I, there's never been a call that's been more easy to make, impactful, um, that's gotten better results. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I can tell you right now that <clears throat> as a second degree result, I'm closing $5 million worth of business this month um, based on a call to get back in touch. That call led to a, hey, what are you doing? I've got a bridge loan. That bridge loan led to you know two sides that are is, is going to be a five million dollar transaction that will close uh, this month. You know we're, we're funding it on Tuesday, and so all of that started from a rekindling of one of those calls, um, and it was probably a, a three month thing. But that's one tangible in your pocket result that came at the start from a gratitude call. Yeah, you know what I love the most about your answer is the fact that you didn't have this long list of tangible results because I think that's the trap. If we go into these calls looking for a result, we're now no longer speaking from that place of true gratitude and and giving. Uh, now we're, we're egoically attached to an outcome. And what I am certain is that there will be a lot of tangible results of this and intangibles, as you just described, meaning, you know, somebody's going to call you seven months from now. And they're going to say, hey, I, you know, I need to be pre-approved because we're going to, you know, buy another house. And that's going to be somebody that you made that gratitude call to seven and a half months ago. And it's just that they remembered you. They'll never forget the way you made them feel. And that's the part that I really want everybody to get here is it's not what you say. It's the way that you make them feel that connection that causes people to want to come back and work with you and reward you because they are grateful to you in return. So, um, and then, and then that ancillary part, right? Like, I mean, I have so many stories, just like the one that you told about, like you get this one deal, you know, and it's like $120,000 FHA streamline refi. But what you didn't realize is that that, that person then introduced you to somebody they knew. And when you look back on it, six years later from that referral, you got like eight other deals, right? I mean, there's this like web that is created, uh, and, and it's, and it's just about trusting that. If you make the calls, the results will take care of themselves. Um, what about is it? That's, a, go, go that's exactly right. I, just one point I want to hit on. It was really tempting when people responded. Well, it was like a dopamine hit, and you know, like man, this is amazing to go right into something else that was you know more self serving. And so I had to work really hard not to do that. <clears throat> um, and I think it did benefit me, you know, because there was there was always a follow up call that that they would actually take, um, you know, because of that. And so, um, you know, just for what it's worth, anybody who tries these, you get something going and people start asking questions, of course, answer their questions, but I would just encourage you to try to be, try to be clean and, and pure and just say, thank you. And great things will come from it. Yeah. So, so that, so what I'm hearing you say there is that there's this, there's the, there's the definite subtle seductive, uh, intention of like, oh, wow, they responded well to me. Now I'd like to roll into my old script and say, hey, would you like to get together for a cup of coffee? And now all of a sudden you've completely aborted the intention. So there will be that overture, I would imagine, from the person of like, well, hey, you know, I'm glad that you called. And, you know, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, where are rates right now? Or what are you seeing in the market? Or, you know, blah, blah, blah. blah. So don't, uh, what I'm hearing you say, and confirm this, please, is don't run away from that interaction if they want it, but don't 
instigate or institute the interaction in that initial call. Know that there's another call that can be made two weeks later, you know, after this this first call takes place that you, you could use as a follow-up. Tim, I'm so happy that you asked that and I really want to dive into it. But before I do that, can we just like put an exclamation point on this? Because the intention of my call was just to say thank you, man. I, I want you to really receive that first of all. And, and just know that I'm truly grateful. And I feel like it's important for me to express that. Um, now, <clears throat> just talking about, you know, what we've got going, like, here, here's what I see going on in the market, you know, and then go into it. Mm -hmm, but make mm -hmm. it a big deal that this is not what that was about. And they're the ones that are steering the conversation that way. Because think about it on the other end. And like, this is, goes back into what we said. If I'm receiving this call from my mortgage guy that I haven't heard from since 2007, and he calls to say thank you. What are you really thinking, Tim? Yeah, that he's got an agenda. Yeah, what's coming, right? And so if you do that, if they react really well and like they can feel your heart and all those things, in my opinion, you've totally diluted the strength of that call because you chose to go into it. In reality, what happens is rates are going to come down. People are, everyone everywhere is going to talk about tapping their homes for equity and get cash out. And they're going to be like, man, I'm calling Robertson. He called me. He was truly grateful for my business. That means something to me, right? And I just wanted to make sure not to muddy the waters with what I was really trying to do. And I think that's the message that I want to get across. Yeah, you know, the, the this kind of ties into the strategy you've heard me talk about before. Strategy is really an inappropriate word. I actually should steer clear of using that word, but the, the philosophy, you know, and I, I, you've heard the Terry Morler story about how, you know, I just gave and gave and gave and gave and gave until finally she just said to me one day, I feel like I'm cheating on my husband. And I'm like, what do you mean? And she's like, you know, I've give all my business to Eric and you know, it's, I've been working for seven years, but I should be giving it to you. And I'm like, oh, well, like, oh, you know, I'm not, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make you feel uncomfortable. This was never about me trying to pursue you for business. I, obviously, at some point in time, if we were to work together, that would be great because you're amazing. Um, but I don't want you to feel any pressure. I respect your relationship. The more that you don't try to close somebody and you're just genuinely kind, the more uncomfortable it starts to feel to them because they start to feel like they they want to do something to reciprocate and you're and you're, and you're not you know the minute that you then put the sales pitch on then it's like ah gotcha that's what this was about now i can throw up my guard and and throw up all my objections and run for the hills like they do with every other lender well hello friends and i hope that you're enjoying this episode of the 360 experience podcast to listen to the remainder of this episode please visit us at the Loan Atlas, where you will also find the most comprehensive resource for mortgage professionals to build their practice, backed by the greatest faculty that's ever been assembled in the mortgage industry. Check us out at the link below or go to theloanatlas.com. Look forward to having you as a guest on our next episode of the 360 Experience Podcast.